took place yesterday for confirmation as the new head of NOAA, uh, uh, talked to me at some length about this uh, image. Uh, and this is more significant than just the increase in dead zones. This is a huge area of the ocean. Uh, now the causes, of course, as you know, about 20% each year comes from deforestation. Uh, that's, oh, I'm sorry, that's, uh, as you know, perhaps know, the border between Haiti on the left and the Dominican, Public on the Dominican Republic on the right. <coughs> One set of policies on the left, another set of policies on the right. Policy actually does matter no matter the level of poverty. And when the land is cleared, the cattle and livestock follow. And diet uh, and the food we eat is very much connected uh, to this uh, crisis. Uh, let me set this one up. What I'm going to show you is a time-lapse image of 30 years in less than 30 seconds of an area of the Amazon uh, near Santa Cruz, Bolivia, uh, to illustrate the impact of poverty on the loss of the uh, forest. <laughs> major cause is the dependence on carbon-based fuels. Uh, the United States uh, uses a lot of foreign oil, still domestic oil. The current debate uh, over offshore drilling can be put in perspective uh, this way. Uh, I mean, this is, this is not a controversial calculation. Uh, but the major source, uh, in my view, the most serious uh, source is our dependence on coal here in China and in many other places. Here are the existing coal plants in the United States. Here are the ones that have been proposed for construction uh, in the last six years. But I mentioned we were beginning to see a shift. Many people are not aware of how significant this shift is beginning to be. Here are the ones that have been canceled in the last few years. In, in each of the last two years, a, significant, uh, a, a, more, a significantly more new generating capacity was added for wind power than from coal. The amount of coal-generated electricity actually went down last year, and new green alternatives are being uh, proposed, and there are a lot of reasons for this. The coal industry is fighting back, and last year, uh, the coal industry spent a half a billion dollars on advertising and lobbying to promote uh, the, the, the image of what they call clean coal. And this was a full page ad in the Washington Post placed by Peabody Coal. And I looked at that image and I thought, there's something familiar about that. And then I remember. <laughs> Now, when they spend $500 million putting their version of this story in the minds of the American people, it increases the importance of you being willing to speak out and as civic scientists find ways to communicate the truth about what this huge increase in global warming pollution uh, is doing. In all branches of medicine, in all parts of the country, were asked that question. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. Yes, surveys show more doctors smoke Camels than... <laughs> Just before Christmas in my home state, a billion gallons of coal sludge was released. And uh, it was an ugly sight. Wait a minute. Uh, so on Christmas Day, I was surprised to see this advertisement from the coal industry singing lumps of coal. Affordable and adorable. Let me be clear about it. Al Gore, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, uh, they don't know what 
we're talking about. It's an environmental rate. That's all you can call it. Mountaintop At Climate Energy, we view climate change as a very serious threat to our business. That's why we've made it our primary goal to spend a large sum of money on an advertising effort to help bring out and complicate the truth about coal. The fact is, coal isn't dirty. We think it's clean. It smells good, too. So don't worry about climate change. Leave that up to us. The Alliance for Climate Protection is a bipartisan group committed to trying to enter the public debate in one of the arenas where it counts, and that is uh, speaking directly to the public. And here's an example. Oh, I'm sorry. On Monday. No, I'm sorry. That's the cold. America is in crisis. The economy, national security, the climate crisis. The thread that links them all? Our addiction to carbon-based fuels like dirty coal and foreign oil. But now there's a bold new solution to get us out of this mess. Repower America with 100% clean electricity within 10 years. A plan to put America back to work, make us more secure, and help stop global warming. Finally, a solution that's big enough to solve our problems. Repower America. Find out more. Now, in, in closing these images, I, I want to come back to Lincoln because he demonstrated that we as a nation do have the capacity to rise above our limitations and chart a new course. We have done this in the past with not only abolition, but the passage of women's uh, suffrage. We have seen uh, the ability of the United States to win two wars simultaneously and then to win the peace afterwards. We have brought about the Civil Rights Revolution under the leadership of Dr. King, and just uh, last month we saw the electrifying redemption of the revolutionary promise of America that all people are created equal. We saw the U.S. lead the free world in bringing down uh, the system of communism, and we've seen vivid demonstrations of our ability to do great things uh, technologically. The day that this picture was taken, uh, in Houston, Texas, at Mission Control, there was, of course, a, a loud cheer. And looking back to the challenge from President John F. Kennedy, when he announced a national goal, of landing a person on the moon and bringing that person back safely within 10 years. There were many people who doubted that we could do it. But eight years and two months later, this picture was taken. And those cheering in the control room, the average age of those systems engineers was 26, which means their average age when President Kennedy issued that challenge was 18. Our home is in danger. We do have everything we need to save it, with the possible exception of political will. But the United States of America has just demonstrated that political will is, in fact, a renewable resource. I'd like to conclude with a, a few other uh, brief comments. This is a moment in our history as a nation and a moment in the history of the human species that is completely without any precedent. Whenever you hear phrases like that, the natural tendency is to, is to hold them at arm's length. And any coalition that uh, tries to look after the interests of all the members of their coalition, if a big wealthy part of that coalition is made up of carbon-based industries, vulnerable to the truth that Upton Sinclair wrote a hundred years ago when he said it's difficult to get a man to understand something if his salary depends upon him not understanding it. It's un it is understandable that we have a, a full-blown political struggle to communicate the truth about our situation. 
I've tried for 30 years with increasing focus, with increasing effort, and many of you have as well. Many of you were involved with, long before I was, and I see some in the audience who I think of immediately. But this is a task for all of us.